Hello and welcome back to another Doctor Who action figure review. The sun is shining, summer's here, and BNM have a brand new series of Doctor Who action figures out. It's that time of year again where everyone goes mad trying to hunt them down. And this year, just like last year, we have been spoiled. Every year we seem to ask ourselves, though, they can't top this next year. Surely they can't top this next year. I am, as you can probably hear it in my voice, I am thrilled with what I am talking to you about today, which is the Keys of Marinus set featuring two Vord and Ian Chesterton. If there's one thing that we Doctor Who collectors for this range have been after for the last 13 years, it's more 60s monsters and some 60s companions. And at long last, we've got some new 60s monsters and our first 60s companion in the form of Ian Chesterton. So, without further ado, let's crack on with the review. Oh, I'm a poet and I didn't know it. So, as ever, the figures come packaged in the standard window box with the new Doctor Who logo, the grey and blue TARDIS on the side. We've got the gold limited edition foil sticker on the front. And then on the back, we have a look at the three figures inside the set. And we also have a synopsis for the story, The Keys of Marinus, which is a first for the three-pack line. And as another first, we're also treated to a little diorama backdrop, which has always been great fun with the Dalek sets and the TARDIS sets. And I'm thrilled to see that we've now got them on the three-packs as well. So this makes for a lovely display for your figures and features elements taken directly from the serial itself. Out of the box, we have our three figures, our two Vord, our new monsters, and Ian Chesterton. So I'm going to start with Ian first, and straight away, what a head sculpt. I think he looks a dead ringer for William Russell. I think they've done a tremendous job, particularly at certain angles. You can really see that likeness. It's great. I love the way that they've sculpted the hair. And as you can see, there's like a little bit of a grey wash there, which really makes the sculpt pop. It looks great. And all of the paint apps around the eyes and the lips are very neat and tidy. He looks brilliant. He looks just like what you'd expect an Ian Chesterton figure to look like. Then moving down to the body, well here you can see that they've reused the body from the John Sim Master. So he's got a dark grey jacket on, as you can see they've painted the buttons black, and his shirt and tie have also been painted, again, very neat and tidy. The tie has been painted in suitably 60s colours and pattern. I'm not sure what the reference was for that, I don't know if that was something that was just made up, or if there was actual reference for this. It's very difficult to find pictures of Ian in colour in his suit, or at least I've always struggled, but whatever the case, it looks suitably of that era, and I think it works very well. What I do find interesting is that they've painted rings on Ian Chesterton's hands. Now, I don't know if that's because they were sculpted on. It doesn't look like they're sculpted on rings, or I think maybe the sculpt is quite soft, so it doesn't stand out quite so prominently. But I'm more interested as to why Ian's got a wedding ring on. Clearly, this comes after the chase when Ian and Barbara got married, obviously. And then moving down to the legs, we've got lighter grey for the trousers and matte black for the shoes. There's not an awful lot more to say other than he looks great. If you've always wanted an Ian Chesterton figure, which I think most of us have because he is the original of original companions along with Susan and Barbara, well, this is everything that you would want from an Ian Chesterton figure. Of course, now the question is, when the hell are we going to get Barbara and Susan? You can't have Ian without Barbara. So he looks great. Very glad to see that we finally have a 60s companion to add to our 60s shelves. Then, of course, we move over to our new monsters, the Vord. The second monster to appear in Doctor Who after the Daleks, if I'm not mistaken. And they're an interesting one because, again, much like with Ian, as far as 60s characters go, Vord have always been high on people's lists certainly high on my list of 60s monsters, so I'm so pleased that we finally got them, and not just one, but two. And I know what you're thinking, oh, it's just the same figure twice over. It isn't. There are subtle paint differences to differentiate the two, and sculpt differences, because in actual fact, we have two brand new head sculpts here. As well as the new head sculpts, you'll obviously see there is a lot of new tooling in general, in terms of the head, hands, feet, and of course the belt attachments around the outside. Now, the first thing I want to point out is the use of the body. This is the Claws of Axos Axon Man, which was also used for Shara's Jack. And honestly, it makes so much sense. If you're going to have a monster that wears a wetsuit or a leotard, that is the sculpt to reuse. It's perfect. And they've done a tremendous job reworking that sculpt into the Vord. 
So like I said, these two Vord are slightly different. You've got the one with the circular antenna, or whatever they are, and you've got the one with the triangular antenna, or whatever it is, a protuberance, I don't know. Maybe they're long-distant cousins of the Teletubbies. So the circular one is the Vord that attacks Susan in the first episode of The Keys of Marinus, and I believe gets stabbed in the back by Arbitan. And then we have the triangular one, which is the guy that goes after the Doctor and falls down the pit and is replaced with a very convincing cut-out paper man. So beyond that, let's crack on with the details on both. So starting with the circular one, head sculpt, really great. For something that is just a solid black head, there's a lot of detail here. You have the spiky fins at the back, obviously these large ear-type things. I love the fact that they've sculpted in these little ear holes on the side so that the actors can hear what's going on. And there actually is some paint deco here because the eye sections are actually painted in a slightly glossy black. So it just sets it apart from the rest of the head. And you can also see around the neck, they sort of added a false collar to make it look like part of the wetsuit. The actual antenna piece, or whatever you want to call it, the Teletubby bit, that is just PVC rubber. It's firm but bendy enough that it, you know it won't snap. And then when we move down to the torso, Obviously, that is just matte black, but you have this new belt holster piece. And you can see there's these sort of rectangular bits at the front and you have the little sheath to fit the dagger in. And that can slot in the hole there. And they've even added a little bit of deco, these little silver circles here, as if they're like little studs holding the leather belt together. It's simple but effective. And then moving down to the hands. Again, this is brand new tooling, which is great. We have two new hands. You've got the closed hand for holding the dagger and you have the outstretched webbed hand. And I love that. I love that if you're going to have a character with webbed fingers, it's always good to have an outstretched hand so you can really show off that webbed effect. And these are finished in a glossy black plastic, which again sets it apart from the rest of the suit. And that's what I really like about these guys is that on the surface, they could seem quite boring, just a solid black figure. But because of the different finishes, the matte and the gloss, and the, only the tiniest little bits of silver, it just offsets it a little bit and really draws your eyes to parts of the sculpt. And speaking of which, round here above the hips, you have two more little silver dots. And then moving down to the lower legs. Now, I'm not sure if this is brand new tooling or if they've just adapted the already existing sculpt from the Axon Man, but you now have ankle articulation in these lower legs. So new pieces, or did they just take the original tool and add articulation in there. I'm not sure. But what is brand new tooling are these amazing flippers. They <laughs> look great. Again, glossy black plastic. A lot of detail here with the ridges on the top and the buckles on the side. Really great stuff. So that is a lot of new sculpting going on here. And that's the same for the other guy for triangle head. Again, everything is the same. His paint deco differs ever so slightly. He has a silver dot just sort of beneath his Adam's apple between his collarbone and uh, he doesn't have the silver dots on the crotch piece. And in terms of the accessories we have the new daggers which are painted silver with a little black part around the handle section. So the dagger fits snugly into his little sheath holster thing on his belt. This can be removed like that. Now in order to get this in his hand what I have found is that trying to get it in that way doesn't really work because the handle is quite thick. So what I suggest is going up through the bottom like that and pushing it in through that way. And that creates the look perfectly. But if you want to do it the other way and have the hand holding the dagger pointing down like they do in some of the stills, push it through from the top and it works just like that. Looks great. So Ian Chesterton has all of the standard articulation of one of the earlier figures. He has articulation at the neck, but this is kind of restricted by the tightness of his, of his collar. So uh, I'm not gonna force it because I don't want any paint rubs on his neck. He has articulation at the shoulders, swivel joints there, at the biceps, at the elbows, swivel joints at the wrists, at the waist, at the hip, so the legs can go forwards and out to the sides and then articulation at the knees so they can pivot back and forth. The Vord is slightly more articulated, so again you've got swivel joint at the head, the half ball jointed shoulders so the arms can swivel all the way around and also go out to the side like that for more posability, the swivel joints at the shoulders, 
and at the elbow so they can pivot back and forth. Again, at the wrists as well, so they can swivel all the way around. At the waist, at the hips, again for movement forward and out to the sides. At the thighs, so they can swivel all the way around. Pivots at the knees and also at the ankles, so they can go all the way around. So that's it. The Keys of Marinus set. I can't quite believe I'm saying it. I can't quite believe that after 13 years of classic Doctor Who figures being produced, we finally got Vord, we finally got an Ian Chesterton. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, you can hear it in my voice. You can hear how excited I am. I've always wanted some more 60s monsters. Vord will always right up there. So I am one happy camper. So these are out and available now. Happy hunting. I hope you managed to get hold of them. They're really great figures. If you're a big fan of Sixes Doctor Who like I am, you're going to love them. And of course, we're one step closer to having the dynamic duo Ian and Barbara, London 1965 themselves. So fingers crossed that one day a Barbara Wright figure will come along and we can complete the set. Thanks for watching, everybody. And I'll see you next time for another 60s Doctor Who set, which is the Sensorite set. Can't wait. See you then. Bye bye.